He'll take you by the hand and lead you back to the <laughs> hospitality room. How are you doing today, Ellen? Okay, Sharonda, how are you? I am great. I get to talk to you today. You just made my entire 2021 already. I'm so here for it. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Where are you? I'm in Atlanta right now, Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, yeah. Yes. I was there, I was there a couple of months ago. I was shooting a film in September in Atlanta. Atlanta's getting to be a big movie place now. I know, right? Yeah. Pretty, all the stuff is happening. I'm like, I never get to see anyone because I'm stuck out in the suburbs. <laughs> uh -huh. um, but I love, love, love your performance in Pieces of a Woman. And I love that we get to explore this generational family trauma uh, between your character and Vanessa's. And I really wanted to ask you, because in your career, you've been able to tell so many stories, um, so many women-centric stories of kind of the trials and tribulations that women go through. And I really wanted to speak to you specifically with your character being a Holocaust survivor and what that was like really channeling that energy or that pain um, that someone would go through in that scene with Vanessa. Yeah, but well, I've played Holocaust survivors before, so I've done a lot of research um, about the Holocaust. This is the first time that I ever played a person from, who was the Holocaust who was happening in Hungary. Mm -hmm. um, now, she was born, I think, at the end of the Holocaust. And I think she got out somehow, we don't know how, probably her family members got her out to America when she was very young because she has no sign of an accent. So um, I think she grew up in America, it, but her birth was very um, difficult under those circumstances in the Holocaust. So I based my character on what it's like to have gone through profound trauma as you enter the world. Yeah. and what then forms you as a person. And for me, the scene that Kata wrote um, as an introduction to the character was a great metaphor for how she views life. When she says she's staging everything and she demonstrates how a chair is just a chair until you put a cushion on it. Um, and she's staging for all of her friends and she doesn't get paid for it. She just does it because she likes it. And that, that says to me that she likes to improve things. She likes things to not only be better, but look better. Right. Um, and that, that's a good metaphor for how she's, um, what she wants for her daughter. Her daughter is grieving and her daughter is grieving in a very internal way. Right. Uh, and it, from my point of view, it's she's locked off and she's not grieving, which is not true. She's just grieving in her way. So I think the film in it's about a lot of things. But one of the things it's about how is how everybody gets to grieve in their own way and yeah. be allowed to do that. Yeah, and that's what stood out to me is because we deal with pain and grief and trials in so many different ways. And what I wanted to ask you specifically is when you're going through a tough time or when you're dealing with grief, how do you really find your courage and your voice to speak and fight, as your character said in the film? Me personally, in my own life, mm -hmm. you're asking. Yes. Um, well, I've had a lot of uh, various kinds of spiritual training. Thank God, because a year like this past year has been really difficult. I read that great book last year, Sapiens, uh, which is a history of humanity, a wonderful book. And in it, he says how, sorry? I actually just ordered that book. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, you'll love it. It's just terrific. Um, but in there, he says that we are the next step up evolutionarily from chimpanzees. And we have the most um, genes in common with the chimpanzees. And they're social animals. And they live in groups. And they are always with other members of their group. And they touch each other a lot. And they play with each other. 
relate to each other. And since this pandemic, that's been the challenge because I can feel myself getting COVID brain. And I know the problem then is that my inner chimpanzee is lonesome. <laughs> and so I go outside and I go to the park and relate to other people uh, and calm myself. Uh, I, I have this experience where I was really feeling lonely one day and I went out and I was just sitting in the park watching someone, a family playing ball and a Frisbee came flying over the fence and landed near me and I returned it and the girl said, thank you. And I immediately felt a little better. Like I had related to someone. Right. I, I had been useful to someone. I had returned a Frisbee and I felt better. So I said, that's the key is relating and being useful, finding a way to be helpful to someone somehow. So that's what's been guiding me through the pandemic. Ellen, thank you so much for sharing that. I really appreciate it. Now I'm excited that I ordered the book. Yeah, so good. I know you'll love it. It's really good. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. I really appreciate it. And I really hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thanks. The same to you, dear. Nice talking to you.